Good morning, and welcome to the Sleep Tube Remote Villa. My name is Arthur. I am an architectural and urban designer and founder of New Human Design Studios. I consider my home to be in Hollywood and along the Malibu coast in California, but I decided to take a summer job here in the Badlands National Park, South Dakota, so I could experience and photograph the spectacular scenery here. It's some of my favorite in the United States a combination of natural prairie grasslands and these wonderful rock formations. The Sleep Tube Remote Villa is a custom prototype of a concept I've developed to provide temporary shelter for the homeless in Los Angeles as well as in any city, and then also for any refugee or emergency shelter needs anywhere in the world and beyond. The concept can also provide sturdy, creative habitat for anyone, just about anywhere. It can be temporary, mobile, or semi-permanent, even permanent. I will also be developing a lightweight package design that can be carried on your back. I came up with the idea out of two completely different experiences in LA. One was from an architectural and urban design point of view, the other was from actually becoming homeless myself. Yes, I had the experience of becoming one of the 57,000 plus homeless people in Los Angeles, something I had never expected. I had moved to LA to be closer to its large population of dynamic, creative, and forward-thinking people who are also oriented towards health, fitness, and ecology. I am, beginning a pres I am beginning to present new concepts for social economics and urban design. I was also the nanny and driver for a model friend of mine while she attempted to become a supermodel. She has a four-year-old son who I cared for. After six months, she realized she could not make the money she expected and decided to give up custody of her child, which left me stranded and without a job. I was not able to find a job quick enough to afford the $1,300 a month we were paying for the apartment. Suddenly, I was forced to live on the streets, an extremely degrading experience. I am creative though, and I found ways to survive, mostly hidden, along the beautiful Santa Monica and Malibu beaches. I actually had some of the greatest experiences in my life during those months. Most mornings I sat high on my favorite cliffs and watched pods of dolphins breach with the first golden rays of sun glistening across the great sea. There were many wonderful sunsets and the beaches are awesome. One night I found myself stranded in L.A. and it began to rain. Nearly every potential shelter is guarded and gated off. There is really nowhere to rest except on the sidewalks. I remembered a tube slide at a playground where I had taken the child off it. So I quickly walked there and sure enough it provided near perfect and comfortable shelter for that night. But there was no way I could ever take up long term residence in a slide at a children's playground strictly off-limits to a homeless person. I realized this form in general could provide quick and easy shelter if provided in an official situation, and it could be very easy to mass produce, transport, clean, and maintain. Then there was the architectural and urban design point of view. Cities should be beautiful. They should be like our best resorts. Los Angeles grew as a sprawling mass of individual homes, each reflecting their economic status. Those with very little or no income often live on the streets. At best, they might find a tent and put it on the sidewalk, sometimes forming tent cities. This is a disgrace. It's also unhealthy and ugly. Tents are great, but they look like tents. They don't blend in any cityscape very well. So I tried to figure out a more attractive architectural solution to temporary shelter needs. I used the tube shelter concept to create an idea of two vertical columns, each three foot diameter. One would be mounted on a three foot cube step box that could be used for storage. It is hinged at the base so it can tilt down to a horizontal position for sleeping or relaxing. The second adjacent column would be a hygiene unit that could contain a dry toilet, a small sink, and shower above. I'll show you the first drawings I had for it.
Here is the vertical hygiene unit and then the vertical position of the sleep tube and the horizontal position tilted downwards and then the step box that's also used for storage. A person who becomes homeless or needs temporary shelter can go to a central agency to obtain a key for the storage box and a hinge, as well as bedding. The police would have access to all units, so if they find a person in need, they can quickly take them to a sleep tube and allow them to stay the night until they find further assistance. The sleep tube and hygiene units can be located almost anywhere, including the back of parking structures and behind shopping plazas, even rooftops. They can also be mounted right on sidewalks next to buildings as architectural columns without people easily recognizing their actual use. They can also be combined to form small communities in a park-like setting. That is the main concept. As I mentioned, I decided to take a summer job at the lodge in the Badlands National Park so I could experience the spectacular scenery, do photography, and finish some of my writing projects. The lodge provides play housing, but it's nine miles away. I live according to my strong urban design principles of living near or at my place of work and near my daily activities. I haven't owned a car for seven years, although I love cars. I just use them for long distance and recreation travel. I didn't want to live nine miles away, so I decided to create the first prototype sleep tube for myself. This one is custom. It is four foot in diameter, which ends up being really great for reclining. I also have a large, clear Lexan section on the side and the front window, so from the inside it has an unexpected, open, spacious feeling. The Badlands are quite remote. Rapid City is 80 miles away. It is the nearest area for materials. So I decided to use sheet aluminum and Lexan. I was able to find a friend with a pickup, and she took me to pick up the 10-foot sheets and other initial supplies. The managers allowed me to work in a clear, relatively flat dirt area near the maintenance shed, as well as borrow a drill and jigsaw. They also gave me some scrap plywood, which I used for the stand. I spent only $550 in materials total. It took me three weeks to build and that included a lot of time spent waiting for rains to pass and the dirt work area to dry out. I was able to build it entirely myself with basic tools except for a few occasions when I needed an extra person to help hold, to help hold the screws. It's completely demountable. It can go back to sheet form. Then I was able to locate it near the National Park campground because it's completely temporary. It only touches the ground at the stand and the steps. It's not staked down. It can move. The fence posts are only there as tethers in case the high winds manage to lift it up and attempt to carry it away. No electricity hookups nearby. So I've purchased a 20 watt solar panel from Wholesale Solar out of California for $75. It provides direct electricity to power a cooling fan, my cell phone, and it charges my laptop, computer, and rechargeable batteries for the LED lighting that I use at night. The aluminum has been quite sturdy in the cylinder form. It remains cool when in shade, but any aluminum that hit gets hit directly by the sun heats up quite a bit. So I've created a sunshade, and I put that up each morning and then take it down in the evening so I can enjoy the beautiful sunsets and starry nights. 
I have a full view of the Milky Way in, when it appears. This is the shade cover I've developed. I've been living in it for a month now, and it's been a great success. It's very comfortable, and it's weathered some terrible storms. Just a few nights ago, I survived in it through the worst storm I've ever been in. It was very scary with torrential rain, very high winds, and heavy lightning. It barely shook at all. The winds were hitting it broadside, and probably the aerodynamics helped. It's also weather tight with no leaks. Many tents nearby were abandoned, flattened, or had to be taken down while I sat with full protected view of everything. With this custom version, I did not create the storage box steps that the normal homeless version would have. Instead I've had to uh, store all, all my things inside. So I created these small storage boxes with the look of metallic finish. Normally they would be regular metal. And then I enjoy the aqua colors of the ocean. So I've used uh, blankets and padding for that. I'm near the group section of the campground and I get several groups coming in often asking about it and they've been giving me very positive reviews. So it's quite exciting. I put a description on the back so that when I'm not here anyone can come by and learn about it. The next step will be to create or join a nonprofit foundation so I can begin producing these for homeless people in any city as well as for refugees and emergency shelter anywhere in the world. Then I will work on developing the version that can be transported in sections on your back as well as custom private versions for anyone. So thank you for taking the time to listen and maybe we'll meet someday.